Thank you. Thank you guys for coming today. Um, my name is David Eric Ramos. Some of you guys might know me as Doc Jazz 4. I, let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I play these things. I've been having Ocarina videos posted on YouTube for the past eight years, so I'm older than most of y'all have been in school. Uh, just in case you're wondering, my channel is, I go from like extremely horrible YouTube videos to, I, I've upped my production a little bit. So if you guys are interested, youtube.com slash docjazz4. And I actually teach you guys how to play ocarina. So I'm, what I'm going to do with this panel today is I'm going to give you a little bit of the history, where it came from, and then we're going to talk about how to play them. If any of you have an ocarina, who has an ocarina? A couple of you. Awesome. I'm going to have you guys come up. <laughs> and I'm actually going to have you guys play. And then after that, we're going to have a little session with some buddies of mine. Uh, we practice all day today to do a couple ensemble songs for you guys. So um, let's start off with a question. How old is the ocarina? Let's have a couple guesses from out there. 700 years. I saw a hand way back there. A thousand. It's older. 10,000, 4,000. It's actually about 12,000 years old. Uh, it's way older than The Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Mind-blowing. Uh, actually, it's kind of a trick question. The ocarina as we know it, the one that I just played, is actually only about 160 years old. What is 12,000 years old are vessel flutes, which is the class of instruments that the ocarina is. So uh, basically, I'm going to tell you about where we found them at. But first, if I can forward here. What is an ocarina? Um, an ocarina is a type of instrument called an aerophone. It's basically like a flute. Uh, anybody else who has a flute uh, is, is also an aerophone. They're globular flutes to be specific, meaning that it's based on a chamber. Uh, some of you guys might have seen like classical flutes. They're the silver ones that people play in, in orchestras. Um, this is from that family, but this is a globular flute. Uh, this one's actually made out of clay, which is the kind that most of you guys have. They're all uh, mostly clay, but they do come in a couple different materials. The picture I have on the screen are uh, a couple clays, some ones that are made out of wood. I own some that are made out of aluminum and different types of metals. Um, and I actually have a collection of like 150 ocarinas from the past 160 years, so I'm kind of obsessed with these things. Uh, how they work, it's pretty cool. Um, so basically, do you have four holes in the top? Those are called tone holes. And what happens is when you blow into the ocarina, the sound is based, the pitch is on the internal volume. So depending on how many holes you have open, you guys saw me wiggling my fingers all over the place. The higher the pitch, the fingers you have off. Uh, and the lower the pitch, you cover those holes. Um, this, the sound is created from the window that you see there at the bottom of the left picture. And it kind of works like a bottle top. Uh, do I have a bottle up here? I don't. You guys have done this before, where you have like a Coke bottle, and you, you blow over the top, and it gets kind of a whistle. The ocarina works exactly the same way. The edge of the lip there, towards the bottom of the left picture, it splits your wind when you blow into it, and that creates that whistle sound that you get from the Coke bottle. And it goes into the chamber, and that air vibrates inside the chamber, and it creates the sound. It's pretty fascinating. At least I think it's fascinating. So where the ocarina came from, um, we said it's 12,000 years old. Um, they kind of developed all over the place. So we found some in China. Uh, a cousin of it is the Chinese Sun that you see there at the bottom left. And it kind of works exactly like an ocarina with the exception of on mine here. I have kind of a, it's kind of like a nose. Actually, this is like a nose. But um, it doesn't have this. It kind of works like the Coke bottle, like I mentioned. Um, another one we found was in the Macedonia uh, area. Um, that's the oldest vessel flute we have in, that actually works still. In fact, if you go on YouTube, you type in Macedonia uh, flute or ocarina, this guy, he's playing it, and it sounds like a baby screaming. It's just like the worst <laughs> example of an ocarina I've ever heard. But it's, it's cool that it works still, a 6,000-year-old flute. And then these ocarinas kind of originated in the Mesoamerica area. Um, and how that came to be was through the Aztec and the Mayans. And uh, they used these types of flutes, these vessel flutes, for ceremonies and rituals. Uh, basically what they would do is when someone passed away or when someone was being born, they would take out these flutes and they would, um, they would play like these, these songs that would either usher people into the new life or help them come into existence. And what was really cool about these instruments is that they were polyphonic, meaning that they could play two tones at once. And it's pretty fascinating. I have one, but I forgot to take it out. Give me one second.
So this is actually a, um, an ocarina by Slumbered Ocarinas. This is called the Star Key. And it's actually two ocarinas in one. And uh, you can play them both separately or you can play them at the same time. If you play, I'll play one side and I'll play the other and then together. The left side to the right side. Don't applaud that. <laughs> that was nothing. Um, and they, they still make those today, like that one. There's a couple other from Slumbered Ocarinas. I also want to mention that I actually work for uh, the company Slumbered Ocarina, and they sponsored this panel today. So if you want an ocarina, check out SlumberedOcarina.com. OK. Um, so uh, when Hernando Cortez, you guys know about this in your history books, or not, you probably paid, fell asleep during this lecture. <laughs> In the early 1500s, a guy named Hernando Cortez came from Spain to check out South America. And uh, he was so fascinated by these musicians and dancers uh, by the Aztecs that he kidnapped them, took them back to Europe, and showed them off to all the, the, the courts, the people who were in Spain and in France. And they kind of ushered them around. And all the Europeans were fascinated by these amazing dancers and these amazing instruments so much that they tried to emulate them and copy them and they failed miserably. Like, for 200 years, they turned these amazing double chamber ocarinas into children's playthings, and, um, and then they just kind of forgot about them. They made these little uh, ducks, and I don't have one with me, but uh, they made animal shapes, and they still make them today. And it took about two, 300 years for somebody to sit down and, and try to expand that a little bit. So in the 1850s, this guy named Giuseppe Donati, he was an Italian, he took the, the clay flute and tuned it to the Western scale. And uh, it could play a whole octave, and he called it an ocarina, or the ocarina. And this is where the term comes from, which means little goose. And you can kind of see why uh, there's a goose, in case you don't know what a goose looks like. <laughs> and this is the shape of the ocarina. This would be the tail here on the right, the neck, and it was decapitated. And you blow in right there. And uh, the first ocarina ever made was actually in the shape. It was actually a goose. Uh, and they just thought this would not make people laugh. So um, they actually became pretty popular uh, in the late 1800s. These, they formed a quintet. Uh, these five ocarina players you see there, the six guys right there, they expanded to seven. Uh, they were called the Ocarina Group of Budreo, or the Ocar Grupo Ocarinistico Budresi, and they still exist to this day. Um, they kind of they shift in cycles, and they bring in new players every couple of years, so that it's, it's, it's still a big thing in Italy. And they went into Austria, into France, into Germany. Uh, there were big ocarina companies, companies that would make 28 different sizes and keys of ocarinas, and uh, you can still find them on eBay. In fact, that's where most of my ocarinas come from is eBay, because nobody knows what these things are. So, um, They made it to America through World War I and World War II. Because the men were coming overseas during the early 1900s from America, they, they loved them, so they brought them back to, to the States. Uh, they were heavily imported, and they were started to become used in schools instead of recorders. Your grandparents probably had an ocarina or knew somebody who had one, and they called them sweet potatoes. So I challenge everybody to go home, call your grandma or grandpa, because you probably haven't talked to them in a while, just to ask them, what's a sweet potato? And, uh, so you see what they tell you. And they actually came in a bunch of different films and pop music. The Wizard of Oz has an ocarina somewhere in the soundtrack. I'm not going to tell you where, but just watch it and see if you can spot it. And there's uh, an old movie called, um, oh, what's that one? It's Bing Crosby, uh, Bob Hope there in that picture. And there's a movie, but I forgot what it's called. <laughs> um, Oh, last thing. You see that book right there? Uh, that was actually a book that was distributed to the men in arms. So there was a company that manufactured ocarinas specifically for, uh, for the men in World War II, and they would distribute these free ocarinas and free uh, sheet music books. And at the same time in the 1920s, uh, there were actually ocarinas in Japan and throughout Asia. And there was a, a man by the name of Akitagawa who started to expand the range of these things. And... Um, it got really popular 
through a documentary in the 1980s called The Great Yellow River. And uh, basically there was this huge boom and uh, people fell in love with the sound of the ocarina through this documentary and uh, that's how Shigeru Miyamoto came to discover it. Which, another trick question, who knows what the first video game that had an ocarina in it? Through The Legend of Zelda. Somebody, yes. Yes, it was actually a link to the past. Um, who knows what the first instrument that was in the Zelda game was? Somewhere in the back. It wasn't actually a flute. Somebody else, but you're close. Yes. Yes, it was a recorder. And it was because the recorder was extremely popular in Japan before the ocarina. And then the ocarina just like, was like, shut up and get out of the way. And then, and then ocarinas took over the country. So now ocarinas are extremely popular in Taiwan and China and, um, and Japan is kind of fading out. Uh, so right now, actually, uh, next to Korea and, and uh, Taiwan, ocarinas are the most popular in the United States uh, around the world, which is pretty cool. Um, so I went this whole time without actually playing an ocarina. I totally forgot to actually play. Um, these are a couple of the uh, games that had an ocarina before Ocarina of Time. Um, see the recorder? That was the official art for those two games that had the ocarina in it. Um, and then we come to the Ocarina of Time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a couple songs for you guys from that game. Just to give you guys a break because I'm talking too much. Let's see. All right, here we go. We're actually going to play some more of those songs at the end, so I'll, I'll save those for that. Um, so let's talk about the Ocarina of Time. How many of you guys have played Ocarina of Time? Yes. Childhood, you're doing it right. All right. 
I don't think I have any spoilers for in this for you guys who have not played, but you'll remember all the notes. In fact, I get so many jokes about playing the ocarina of, oh, you just play A, left C, right C, or whatever. Um, what's cool about these notes is that um, uh, Koji Kondo specifically had to create, like, all the melodies only use these notes, F, D, A, and B. All the songs only use four, five notes, technically. And uh, I think Koji Kondo came up with over 20 songs for the video game that didn't make it in there, of variations of all this that later they recycled from Majora's Mask. And what's also interesting about uh, the buttons on the controller is that um, they use that as inspiration for the sh actual shape of the ocarina, which is extremely impossible to play. Um, the ocarina that I've been playing uh, uses 12 holes. Um, question for the ocarina people. How many holes do you guys have? Uh, show me your hands if you have a 12 hole with you. Okay, one, two, three. And then uh, those of you who have a six hole or a four hole? One, two, okay. You don't count. <laughs> okay, so uh, four holes and six holes. Um, that was a 12 hole. This is a six hole here. Um, they're usually in the shape of a pendant. You guys actually might remember this one. When the video game came out, everyone was looking for this. Um, this is the best that we had. Uh, this was the, the ocarina at the time. It was popularized in Nintendo Power, uh, made by Songbird Ocarina, who sponsored this panel. Thank you, Songbird. And, and uh, this was my very first ocarina. And when I found out that these things existed, I literally cried. Uh, uh, I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. And then I, I got it for my birthday, and I dropped it after two weeks. And then I cried again. Um, but I was in love with the sound of the ocarina and with how easy it was to play, which I want to demonstrate for you guys with everybody who has an ocarina here today uh, in a few minutes. Um, it plays, the six holes play a lot similar to the 12 hole uh, in terms of range. There's only shy about three notes, but um, the fingering is really different. Uh, and my point of all this is that um, the way that you play this is you use four fingers, and the way that you play this is that you play, use 10 fingers. The way that you play this is you would need to use four fingers for this hand, and then three fingers for this hand in the most awkward positioning possible. But Nintendo was like, screw practicality. We just want to give you the controller. So um, that's another view of the ocarina from the game. And I think I have one from Majora's Mask as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, did anybody have any requests? Yes. Clocktown, okay, that's a good one. I thought I had, um, oh, how many of you guys downloaded Time's End by Theo Finney? Do you guys remember that? I was the ocarina player on that. So, and then also Zelda reorchestrated its last album, The Twilight Symphony. How many of you guys got that? A couple people. I was also the ocarina player on that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so uh, clock time. I, I, I mentioned the Theophany because I, I, I thought I, I think I have his backtrack for that, but I don't see it. So let me just play it. I, just, I wanna show you how simple this is, here we go. Actually, I was going to play it in the original key, but I was like, no, it's too hard on that ocarina, so I messed up. Any other requests? There's someone from the front, actually. Black shirt, yeah. Oh, okay.
I was trying to get fancy and do do this thing that um, this is specifically a, a, a double ocarina. It's actually two ocarinas in one, kind of like the other one I had, but this extends the range by about five notes. So um, this is like the twelve hole, and then this is an additional ocarina here. So you you uh, you saw me switching, and you actually have to switch to get um, those extra notes in there, which is really cool uh, for those of you who want a larger repertoire. Um, speaking of larger repertoire, give me a song that's not from Zelda. Time Scar, okay. From um, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross? Okay, one more request. Anything. It can be doesn't matter. Another request. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. That one. Okay. That's an interesting one. And then what did you want to hear? I also don't know that one. Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna play fast the Razzy Sun. <laughs> Thank you. You don't have to just learn video game music. I was going to say that I actually, uh, I just recorded an album uh, a little over a year ago with a lot of original music. And I also like, I try to practice stuff way outside of video game music, classical, rock, uh, just anything really that I can, uh, that inspires me to play. And I really recommend to everyone who actually owns an ocarina that you do the same thing. Just whatever you enjoy listening to, Coldplay, uh, Black Sabbath, uh, Actually, uh, I have a vine, and I recorded a, a couple Black Sabbath songs on there, uh, which is really fun. <laughs> After, let's, I gotta get this. <laughs> I can play that. Don't tempt me. No. We're gonna let's do this first, and then I'll play. I'll play a little bit, and also um, "Stairway to Heaven." That's another one I like to play. Okay, how to play the ocarina? So. Um, Let's have a couple ocarina people come up here. Whoever has one with them, just come stand up here in the front. Um, you might need to look at the screen, so don't worry about facing the audience. 
Um, so uh, how you play the ocarina, yeah, if you guys gonna look at the screen, you can. Yeah, unless you know the scales already. I'll just call out the notes. Um, so it's really easy to play a 12 hole ocarina. Um, basically all you do is you, you cover all the holes. You can see that there's like black holes and then become white. Basically um, it starts with um, the 10 holes on top covered, or eight holes on top, two on the bottom, the two thumb holes. And you lift up your fingers one at a time from right to left, starting with your right pinky. So I'm going to uh, call out each note, and you guys just follow me. OK, here we go. Uh, let's start with the lowest note. Go ahead and say two as you blow into the ocarina. Two. Whoa. Awesome. Cool. OK, okay so now let's try lifting up your right pinky to play the D. And go. Good. And the next note, lift up your right ring finger. Awesome. And then F. Cool. Then G. OK, I'm going to stop you guys here. This is actually one of the tricky parts about playing the ocarina, is that you actually skip over your left pinky. That stays down to give you balance. And you lift up your left ring finger. So let's have you guys play that. A. Good. And then your left middle finger. That's A, I'm sorry, B, and then your left index finger for the high C. Awesome, and there's one more note, that D, left thumb. Awesome, guys, cool. Now let's have you play a song for everybody. Okay, so Zelda's Lullaby. Uh, it's really easy, we'll go really slow. It starts on the E position, which is um, these two fingers down, these two fingers up. Okay, here we go. Really slow. One, two, three, ready, set, go. Dum, dum, dum. Good, second line. One more time. Good, second line. Some of you guys solo. Good job, guys. That's good. All right. Let's do, let's do a little something more complicated. So this is Epona's song. And uh, basically, for those who don't know how uh, these endings and things works, that's a, a repeat on the upper left. You play through those two lines. Then you play the first ending, which is that one. OK? And then you're going to go back to the top, play through again, skip over the first part, and play those last three notes. Does that make sense? I don't have my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know Epona's song. It's this high C. How many of you guys who know, know who a trumpet link is? Yeah, he's. This is him right here. <laughs> he's awesome. All right, here we go. Um, okay, so the first note is the high C. All right, I'll play with you guys. Here we go. Uh, I'll count you down. One, two, three, four. The first ending. Back to the top. Last part. Okay, good job. Last song for these guys. This is the easiest song to play on the ocarina, so I highly recommend if you guys get an ocarina after this, if you don't already have one, learn the song really first, because this is a motiva motivation booster. <laughs> if you learn the song, it'll be like, yes, I am musical. Okay. So Song of Time, it's, it's really only three notes. That's all you need to know. Uh, and then there's a couple notes after that towards the bottom. So um, I'll count you, down, you guys down again because it was hard to play and conduct. OK, so dum, dum, dum. Ready? Ready, set, go. One 
One more time. Good. Let's have a round of applause for these guys. Good job, y'all. You guys can be seated. OK, um, do we have any questions before we have a little performance for you guys? That is a good question. So he, he asked if, um, if, I was music, if I was playing something before the ocarina. I actually was. I've always been a very music inclined. So my dad has a video of me singing in my diapers when I was like a year old. And, uh, and so that was part of my fascination with the ocarina was that I was, I was a huge music lover. I was a huge video game nerd. And when Ocarina of Time came out, it was my world's coming together. So I think, I think part of that, um, that talent that was already there for me, singing and playing a little bit of piano, I just picked up the Ocarina really quickly. But I, I do want to say that the Ocarina is probably one of the easiest instruments out of all the instruments I play. And I play piano, uh, drums, guitar, sing, uh, recorder, just a bunch of different stuff. I love how intuitive it is, just lifting up your finger one at a time from right to left. It's really easy. The four hole is a little bit different. This takes practice because you have to memorize the, com the finger combinations to play the scale, which is really cool that it uses only uh, four holes to play a whole octave. Um, but if, if you're just getting started and you, you're looking for like a first ocarina to get and you don't have any music talent, it really doesn't matter which one you get started on. I, I don't think. It just, either one's gonna take practice. And uh, I, don't, I think most people actually just buy an ocarina if they find it's too challenging, they just like, okay, it's a collector's item. We're just going to leave it there. Um, and uh, that makes me really sad because it, they, it's not appreciated as a musical instrument as much as it is a, like a toy or a prop. So um, hopefully after today, you guys will go home and uh, fiddle around with your ocarinas if you have one and um, put a little practice into it. So yeah, it's a good question. Anybody else? Question? Yes. That, uh, his question was, um, like, do, do materials, like, play any role in how it sounds? Like, do wooden ocarinas sound better than clay? Um, that's really debatable um, between the ocarina makers. Like, I went to a couple ocarina meetups with, with ocarina makers, and they're like, they actually got into an argument over, like, whether or not wood was better over clay. And, um, and basically, it, it really doesn't matter if it's, well, it might how the, the tone resonates, I don't think it does. Like, I have plastic ocarinas that sound almost as good as, as my clay or my wooden ocarina. So it, what it really depends on is how the ocarina is made. Somebody had, uh, sh the guys who have Zelda ocarinas, can you hold them up real quick? There's one, somebody else had a Zelda ocarina. Not you. Somebody has like a, China, a Chinese Amazon ocarina that's it's like 15 bucks on Amazon. Do not get that ocarina. It is like, it looks cool, but it is a terrible ocarina, and people are buying them for like 12 or 15 bucks, and um, then they feel really bad because they're like, well, did I do something wrong? Like, what, why can't I play music? And it's totally not your fault. You're beautiful. I believe in you. <laughs> it, it's, it's the ocarina, so quality really it, it is, um, it's worth the, the price. To go back to your question, um, I don't think it, it plays a huge difference whether it's wood or clay, but there are some extremely beautiful wooden ocarinas. Charlie Hind, um, a guy who actually lives here on the East Coast, he makes these amazing wooden ocarinas that are like $400 or $500. No, those, I have two Hind ocarinas and they're some of my favorites in my collection. But there's actually a forum called theocarinanetwork.com and they have a lot of reviews and information about the different um, makers out there. So that's a good resource. High knocker. No, no, I think, I think you'll like it, yeah. Other questions? Mm, nobody else? Oh, yes. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. When I heard the first sound of an ocarina, it was really funny because okay, so I saw the ocarina Nintendo Power magazine, and I, uh, after I gathered myself back together from crying, 
at just the side of it, um, there was a phone number on it, and it was like, call for like live sound samples. So like I took my magazine to my mom. I was like, mom, can you call this number? And, uh, and the guy uh, who played for me was actually the maker who's still making them, so uh, Darian Songberg. He's my boss now. And, uh, and, he, and he played over the phone, and I, I, I was just overwhelmed with the emotion. And it was really cool because it sounded very similar to the game. I, I don't, it's, it's, um, they sampled real ocarinas for the Zelda games. And um, I was really happy about that because I think when most people um, get an ocarina, they, they expect it to sound like the video game. So if, if there's an ocarina, if you want a Zelda sounding ocarina, um, they have different ranges. Like this is an Alto C or a C3. And that is the range of the Zelda ocarina. Um, they come in different keys, like this one's in G. I have one that are in E flat and in D. Um, this one, this one's in G as well, the Italian one. So you're looking for an Alto C, that's the Zelda range. Um, yeah, good question. Anybody else? Yes. I always recommend sheet music. There's the worst thing, there's two bad things about tablature. What I like about tablature is that it's, it makes music really accessible to new players. It shows you exactly where to put your fingers, and then you feel accomplished, and then you want to learn more. So I am all for getting people started immediately. But what's awesome about sheet music is that there's more of it, first of all. Like, there's websites with tons of video game and tons of anime music that's just ready for people to pick up and people don't know how to tap them out or it's just really hard to find on the internet. And so um, she music is readily accessible. And then second, um, there's no rhythms and tabs. So you have to know the song by already in your head uh, to figure out where, uh, where those spaces are. Which I don't know if you saw in the, in the tabs here, but those spaces denote rhythm. So like, um, dum, dum, then there's a, a larger space between those second and third note. Um, so that's OK, but it's not going to be sheet music. And there's just so much more in sheets, like um, time signatures and uh, uh, accidentals and just all that stuff. It's just better. So um, if you have tabs and you're, and you're trying to like transpose it, um, it's, it's more difficult to do that, too. Does that answer your question? I feel like I wanted to circle there. OK. Maybe like one or two more questions, and then we have to play these songs for you. Yes. I have um, I have a contrabass C. Uh, tip, typically, there's uh, seven sizes of ocarinas. There's and they're they're kind of like recorders. There's soprano, soprano C, soprano G, alto C, alto G, bass C, bass G, and then contrabass C. And I I couldn't bring this with me to this con, but it's like this big. It's like two of my heads stacked on top of each other. That's a disturbing image. But, um, but it's really deep. It's like, um, it's two octaves below this. So it's like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a tenor, I can't go that low. It's not, it's actually, well, it's, it's, it's because it's heavier, like, um, ocarinas have to be bigger to be in lower pitches. So like, this, this, this one is a soprano C, and it's really high pitch. So the bigger that they are, the, the harder it is to actually grip. Because so you have to hold it like this. Um, but it's, it's tuned the same way. There's an ocarina that's uh, half the size of, or a third the size of this table from there to here. And it's almost as tall as this table, too. And um, you, have to, you have to play it like this. It looks really retarded. Any other questions? There's somebody else, I think. No? Awesome. Okay. We're gonna play uh two we're gonna play a song and a medley for you guys. Um we didn't have a lot of time to practice, but I've played with these guys before and I'm really excited to jam with them. They're very nervous, so please be nice. And um uh the first song I think we're gonna try Kirby because that's that's harder, so if we screw that up, we'll make ourselves feel better about playing the second one. All right, so thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, I know you guys 
have a normal boots panel to get to after this. So I appreciate y'all's attention, and uh, I hope you will consider getting an ocarina. So thank you. And then one more plug for songbirdocarina.com because those guys are amazing. They really care about people getting quality instruments. So if you guys are interested in getting an ocarina, type in song you know, on Google. Uh, anything from there is, is amazing, I promise. So songbirdocarina.com. Can I have a round of applause for my friends? <laughs> thank you. It's going to take us a second to get set up, so thank you for your patience. to seven ocarinas, um, and each, every, every player has a different range. So um, Christian is playing uh, an alto G, uh, Mark is playing a bass C, uh, Nikki is playing an alto C, and I'm gonna play a soprano G for this piece. And this is uh, Kirby Green Greens. She's really nervous, so I'll try to go for it. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Thank you. That went better than I expected, so that's, that's good. Okay, so now, now we're gonna play um, the Lost Woods theme and then a little song after that. And these are by far the most requested ocarina songs ever, so I hope you guys enjoy this. Um, our flute player, is he here? No? Okay. 
Oh, wait, no, we had, um, there was a, a guy who was practicing with us because we didn't have a fifth player, but um, it's okay, we're fine. Bobby, did you practice that part? The part that the flute guy was playing? <laughs> One second. Okay, he's gonna try it. Yeah. <laughs> Never played Malta Freeman before, but I can learn. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Thank you guys, appreciate it. <laughs>